Welcome to the Atlas Cast for Building Your Business, presented by best selling author, speaker, and sales and business growth consultant, Archer Atlas. And here's your host, Archer Atlas. All right, hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Atlas Cast for Building Your Business, hosted by me, Archer Atlas. Very quickly, if you'd like to get show notes, transcripts, and updates on when new shows are released, as well as two free gifts, my best selling book, Build Your Business Without Breaking the Bank, and the audio program, Going Up, How to Generate More and Better Leads Quickly and Inexpensively. If you'd like all of that for free, simply go to www.theatlascast.com and subscribe. You'll get it all. The updates, the show notes, the transcripts, and the two free gifts. Build Your Business Without Breaking the Bank and Going Up, How to Generate More and Better Leads Quickly and Inexpensively. Just go to www.theatlascast.com and subscribe. All right, this is episode 11 of the Atlas Cast for Building Your Business. This episode is going to be a little bit different. Unlike last time, when I promised the episode would be short and sweet, and then continue to go on and make it the length of a typical episode, this episode will actually be quick and to the point. Instead of continuing where we left off, we're going to cover the basics, the fundamentals of communicating on the telephone. We're going to cover the top 10 rules for selling, qualifying, setting appointments, or even just communicating on the phone. And in actuality, these rules even apply to situations not on the telephone, in person. Selling, setting appointments, or qualifying leads as we do with the ask approach, all of these tasks, for lack of a better word, they're all done on the telephone, and they're often generally referred to as cold calling. And cold calling is a touchy subject for many people. Some people swear by it. Some people swear it's a waste of time. I view it as a tool, just one in a selling and marketing arsenal. And actually, cold calling can be a very effective tool in your overall marketing arsenal, or the only arsenal if you don't have any money to spend on marketing. And actually, cold calling can be a very effective tool in your overall marketing arsenal, or the only tool if you're dead broke. And it could be effective, that is, if you do it correctly. What we're going to do in this episode is briefly talk about the top 10 rules for cold calling. Some of the people who hear this will disagree with some, most, or all of what I say. Some will even be offended. It doesn't matter one bit. These are the rules I followed and used to get strangers to send me millions of dollars without ever meeting face to face. Add them to your repertoire and I guarantee you, it'll improve your results over the phone. All right, let's get into it. Rule number one, ABC. Always be closing is the number one rule to live by when cold calling. Now last week, we covered ABC, agree, blurb, close. This ABC is different. It's always be closing, and it's the typical ABC that you hear about all the time, especially in Glen Gary, Glen Ross. All right, always be closing is the number one rule to live by when cold calling. I'll say it again. You're not on the phone to make friends. That can come later. You want to get to your point, and you want to get your point across to the busy businessman or woman on the other side of the phone. Look, they want to deal with people they feel are winners, not timid whiners. Know what your objective is for the phone call and ask for it. If someone responds with anything other than a no, you have to answer them, reassure them, and then close them. Here's an example. What's your name again? John, my name is Archer Atlas, and there's not a doubt in my mind this is a phenomenal situation. When can we meet? Whatever you do, don't just answer the question and leave the line silent. You're only closing the door on an opportunity for both of you to benefit. All right, rule number two, end down. This is important tonality to use when speaking to prospects on the phone. It's almost impossible to explain this outside of giving examples. But here, let me try. End every paragraph and every close every time you speak the direct opposite of the way you would ask a question. When you ask a question, you raise your voice at the end of the sentence. What is that in your hand? Doing the opposite portrays an air of authority and certainty, two things you want to display plenty of during a cold call. 
there's not a doubt in my mind you should take the 100 shares. And here's my least favorite example that has become pretty popular as of late. Fair enough? Wrong. Never end up. Yes, when you end up, you may get more people to momentarily drop down their guard and say yes to some request. Most often a request that doesn't involve an exchange of dollars for value. But these momentary yeses, they don't last. And what you're left with is being in a bad, powerless position where you're just some desperate person begging for them to do something. Instead of the authority asking or even telling the prospect to do something which will benefit them greatly. And the way you do that is by ending down. Fair enough? Rule three. You're speaking with your equal. When you're on the phone with a president, CEO, or someone with the authority to buy what you're selling, you'll want them to view you as an equal. This begins with your tone of voice, which shouldn't be reverent or deferential. You're on the phone with an equal. You're just two people discussing business. Whether you're talking to the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or the owner of the hardware store up the block. Because you're speaking to an equal, address the man or woman by their first name. Now, some of you reading this will disagree with me adamantly or say you'd never speak with someone on the phone who called you by your first name. I have only two replies for that. One, if someone would insist upon you calling them Mr. So-and-so, you probably don't want them as a client. They'll probably never think of you or treat you as an equal, and that is far less than what you deserve. Point number two, I have never, not once, had this happen to me. If you handle yourself professionally and sound like a person who should be listened to, you'll never have this problem either. Now, I just want to be clear here. I'm not saying for you to be disrespectful. Calling someone, even a complete stranger, over the phone by their first name isn't disrespectful in and of itself. But treat the matter with respect. Be respectful and professional and you'll be treated that way as an equal. One last thing on this subject. There's one exception. Doctors. They earn the right to be called doctor with their years of medical school. Address doctors as doctor, just doctor. As the pitch progresses and you've built up some rapport, you can shorten it to doc. Now here's a pro tip. When you're trying to sell a doctor on the phone and you've been at it for a while, addressing objections and answering questions, and you feel you've built up a rapport with the doctor, then do this. One of your closes, hopefully your last, bring your voice down and call him or her by their first name before you close. That tactic works well because you've been calling him or her doctor or doc the whole time. Once you call them by their name, it changes the entire situation and opens them up. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Michael, there's not a doubt in my mind you should do the 100 shares. See what I'm talking about? All right, rule number four. Blow off BS objections. Because buyers, they're liars. Many times the reason a prospect won't buy or set an appointment or do whatever it is you want them to do, the reason they give you is not the reason they initially tell you. Always remember, buyers are liars. A favorite lie of an excuse is this, my wife won't let me. Now these lies, they can't be addressed head on or you'll harden their position and make it real. So what you have to do is this, you have to blow these types of excuses off. For example, John, I talked to my wife this morning. She said I could sell it to you. I think one wife's enough. <laughs> Follow the blow off with a solid reason for buying and a close and you're one step closer to selling or at least a step closer to finding out the real objection. Rule number five, cut off excuses. Sometimes, usually directly after asking for the order the first time, a prospect will try to ramble on with excuses. Once you hear that it's not a yes or a question or a useful reason the prospect can't buy, cut them off and get them back on the path you want them on. Control the conversation, but make sure you do it tactfully. All right, rule number six, economy of language. Simply put, every paragraph, every sentence, every word has to have one goal, to get the prospect closer to doing whatever it is you want him or her to do. Use an economy of language. If you can make your point in 10 words, don't use 11. Conversely, 
If your 10 word sentence can be strengthened greatly by the addition of an 11th word, then do it. Remember what your goal for the call is and do what you can to achieve it. All right, rule number seven, he who speaks first loses. For many, this is rule numero uno, but it's important enough to repeat. He who speaks first loses. When you ask for the order and there's silence on the line, the other person better be the one to speak first. If not, you've blown a great opportunity to achieve your objective for the call. All right, rule number eight, don't repeat them. Just as replying to silly objections makes the objection real in the prospect's mind, the same goes for repeating objections. Don't ever repeat a prospect's objection. It will only solidify it and make the objection all the more real. Address the prospect's excuse and ask for the order, but never repeat it. All right, rule number nine, reneges. People don't always live up to their word. Shocker, right? But sometimes people agree to buy something, then they get buyer's remorse once they're off the phone. This is part of life and sales. Don't let it get you down. If anything, turn these lemons into lemonade. If someone reneges on a deal you pitch them, you're obviously good at your job. You call someone to buy something they probably would never have on their own. Your pitch was so good, so strong, and so powerful that they just couldn't say no to you. Some great salesmen don't have this problem, but most do. Some of the best, sharpest guys I've ever known had reneg rates of 50% or higher. If you get a bunch of renegs, you're probably doing a good job. If it's over 50%, you have to investigate why it's happening and look to make a change. All right, rule number 10, GAC and JFDI. Now there's a ton of acronyms associated with selling. You have ABC, which we covered before, AIDA, AFTO, SPIN, all sorts of different acronyms. This list could go on and on, but the two most important ones are GAC and JFDI. GAC stands for get the guy on the phone, ask for the order, and then close him. GAC. The entire over-the-phone sales process operates on these three simple steps. Follow them and you'll succeed. Get the guy on the phone, ask for the order, and close him. As for JFDI, you probably know what JFDI stands for, but I'll spell it out for you anyway. Just freaking do it. This is by far the most important rule for selling or anything in life. Just do it. I'll end these rules with some advice imparted on me by my first boss out of college. Do something, even if it's wrong. This came from a man with a 7th grade education who ran a firm with over 100 employees and was personally making over a couple of million dollars a year on interest alone. This number could have conservatively been 10 times that amount, but the man was a horrible businessman who didn't know how to grow a company or keep his employees happy. But he was making millions of dollars a year living on that motto of just do it. You're never going to get anything just right. Your script, your timing, your tone, it can always improve. But if you just do it, you'll succeed. If you only take one of these rules away with you, take this one and you'll see your skills sharpen and your bottom line grow. All right, I promise to keep this short. Let's wrap up this episode. If you'd like to get updates on this show, the Atlas Cast for Building Your Business, as well as show notes, transcripts, and your two free gifts, my best-selling book, Build Your Business Without Breaking the Bank, and the audio program, Going Up, How to Generate More and Better Leads Quickly and Inexpensively, just go to www.theatlascast.com and subscribe. You'll get all of these free of charge, my gift for being a loyal listener to this show. Last thing here, I'm holding an online summit that will be coming up in the next few weeks. It's going to be me alongside some other highly knowledgeable, hugely successful sales, marketing, and entrepreneurial experts. And the summit is going to cover a vast array of topics that will help you grow your business. Now, here's the good news, and here's where you come in. First off, this summit is going to be free for you to attend if you're a subscriber to the show or if you've taken any of my courses or programs. Second off, 
you will get to decide which topics we'll cover in the summit. I'll have more details for you on this in the next episode of the Atlas Cast. But in the meantime, if there's a topic you want covered in this summit, simply shoot me an email at archer at archeratlas.com and let me know. Like I said, I'll have more details about this for you shortly. All right, that's it for this episode. Like I said, Next time out, we'll continue where we left off in the last episode and really dig deeply into points B and C of the ABC rebuttal formula for turning no's into yeses. Again, I'm really looking forward to this, and we'll see you then.